Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're talking about phrenology. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about phrenology. Based on a set of ideas first put forth by German doctor Franz Joseph Gall in the 1700s, phrenology is based on the idea that your brain is made up of muscles and that just like a bodybuilder, the more you use or exercise specific muscles, the bigger that muscle will get. Phrenologists thought those brain muscles could even get so big that they could enlarge parts of your skull, kind of like giving your head six pack abs. But there was more to it than just making certain head bumps bigger. You see, phrenology practitioners believed that those swollen bumps really meant something. That you could use those bumps on your skull to easily predict things like your aptitudes or personality traits based on the brain muscles that you used. A person must use an area a lot if it was really big, and conversely, if an area was really not bumpy, then you probably didn't use it, like the brain equivalent of skipping leg day. Since you could feel or see what bumps were bigger, people wanted to figure out what brain bumps controlled which things going on in your brain. If you found our channel as a psychology major, you've probably already seen these charts or maybe a statue with these kind of awkwardly placed regions mapped out all over heads. These are called phrenology charts or phrenology maps. By the mid 1800s, American Lorenzo Niles Fowler was mass producing ceramic phrenology busts and publishing material to support widespread adoption of the practice of phrenology. He even started his own publication called the American Phrenological Journal in Miscellany. Because Fowler was producing so many phrenological materials, his busts became the most commonly used and the most readily available. So while the placement and number of skull bump areas has been a little all over the place, phrenologists really settled into 23 skull bump areas based on Fowler. At its height in the 1840s, phrenology was everywhere. You could find educational materials readily available and even go hear lectures about it. People used phrenology to make everyday decisions. It was even commonplace to find a phrenology assessment among the requirements for getting hired for a job. But even though it was incredibly popular in the mid 1800s, at that point, the scientific community had already discredited phrenology because it wasn't really based on any kind of empirical study or impartial observations. Instead, when making those phrenology charts, Gall had started off using only one or two test subjects to make all of his conclusions. He also used, and others added on, incredibly offensive stereotyping when making his conclusions. Y'all know, here on Psy vs. Psy, we focus on the science and not assumptions. But if you do choose to look into this part on your own, it's bad. Yeah, it's, it's real gross and bad. So. Let's skip to now and look at what does the science say. A study published in 2018 used a giant brain imaging database to scientifically look at the claim of phrenology, and they did it in a really clever way. Usually, when you get a brain scan, the MRI kind of removes the sections of skull because doctors are normally not wanting to see skulls. They only want to see the brain, but it does actually scan the skull too. In this study, they actually used that skull data to compare against other information that had been gathered from the almost 6,000 participants. They looked for correlations in skull bumps and all that other data, things like education level, language abilities, and lifestyle questions. Since the traits associated with the original 23 phrenology areas are pretty easily measured now, all the researchers had to do was look at the available data and compare. For instance, the participants who had scored high in verbal and language skills should have bumps in the words area on the phrenology chart. But the researchers couldn't find any real correlations between the measurable data that they had and the 23 skull areas. What's more, they re-demonstrated something else, that your skull 
doesn't match your brain's lumpy bits. <laughs> like a lot of other areas in the body, your brain is actually surrounded by protective tissues and fluids. The meninges are the layers of tissue and cerebrospinal fluid that do all kinds of things for us, but probably is best known for keeping our brain safe when we're injured, like a padded bicycle helmet. Well, I guess it could be argued that the lack of modern technology made it more difficult for phrenologists like Gall and Fowler to see this clearly. They were definitely dissecting brains back then, so I'm not really sure why they ignored the gooey bits. But phrenologists as a whole really only saw what they wanted to see. There is one way that something like phrenology lives on, and as a psychology aficionado, you should be aware of it. You may have heard that brain areas are highly specialized, such as the amygdala being responsible for fear, the hippocampus for memory, or the frontal lobes for judgment and decision making. And this sounds a lot like phrenology because it suggests that one area of the brain is responsible for one type of behavior. While it's true that some brain areas are critical for the expression of a specific behavior, that same brain area may be involved in many other different behaviors. That behavior probably has many required brain parts to function normally. And all behaviors require a coordinated effort from many different brain areas. Our brains are complicated, which is why I'm glad to see so many people wanting to learn, like you, my big beautiful brains. If you want to see more videos from us about other brain history, uh, brain bumps, or gooey bits, <laughs> make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! Careful out there. If someone asks you if you know about phrenology, chances are they're gonna try to touch your head. <laughs>